It was April 1945 and Berlin was surrounded by the Soviet Union. Hitler was in his bunker and he had maps out, he was still planning strategy. And while the Hollywood version, you know, that he thought he had these imaginary divisions and was crazy, he didn't think that, but he, he looked at his existing troops and gave orders to try to break out of the encirclement. But the problem was, those troops, they lacked fuel, they lacked ammunition, and they lacked numbers. They had so many casualties by, by that time, it was hopeless. And in a sense, that's the situation I fear. I really do that we are on the right, or the traditional Americans, the European Americans. We're kind of in the bunker, and we have these imaginary troops that we think can rescue us from the fall of America, when it's really April 1945 for America. And this video is going to be quite a bit different than my usual videos. It's going to be a lot longer, and it's I'm really in a black pill mood. And black pill, in case you don't know the metaphor, just means pessimistic. And don't get me wrong, I'm still very optimistic for our people long term. I'm white pill, but I, I fear that people are getting their hopes up too much with Trump and everything's going to turn around in November and we'll be back to the 1950s, the good old days, and it's just not going to happen. And so I'm going to try to give my predictions, and I'm not a prophet. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope that a year from now you can show this video and say, ha ha, you were stupid, Ramsey Paul. Everything is didn't work out that way at all. I hope, I hope you're right, okay? And I'm not saying this to be defeatist. I, I encourage you to support Trump, but this is just where I see it right now, our future and what's going to happen. Whenever I see a national presidential political poll like on Drudge showing like, like Hillary's five points ahead or Trump's move to within three, I just get so frustrated. I want to scream because Please understand, we do not have a national political election in the United States. We don't. I'm amazed that even a lot of Americans don't realize it. We have individual state elections, and depending on how big the state is, they send electoral votes, or it's called the Electoral College, to vote for president. So take a look at this graphic. Okay, this is the poll that matters. This is how we elect a president in the United States. Each state if they get just one person in the majority votes for, let's say, Hillary Clinton, she gets all the electoral votes for that state. So take a look at California. Even if she gets one more vote than Trump, she gets all 55 votes and he gets zero votes in California. That's how our system works. And if you look at it here, the blue states are the ones that are probably going to go to Hillary and the red ones or brown ones are going to Trump. The problem is if you look at California, Illinois, in New York, those are states with a lot of electoral votes and they're almost for sure going for Hillary. So Trump has a very small margin of error to win. He almost has to win the other states, all the other states, which doesn't look likely now based on the polling. So based right now, it looks like Hillary's gonna get 347 electoral votes to Trump's 191. And, and again, it may change a little bit, but it doesn't look good. It looks like a landslide victory for Hillary. And then we have the Clinton Foundation. Heard of that? Yeah, that was just basically a big slush fund that Hillary created to solicit bribes. It was totally corrupt. The FBI wanted to investigate it, but the Department of Justice stopped it. They didn't want the FBI to look at it. And it's been leaked. Take a look at the contributors to Clinton. And this is pretty much a who's who in globalist corporations funneling bribe money to Hillary Clinton and supporting her. And those corporations, many control the mainstream media. And I've been shocked, a lot of people have been shocked, even normies, about how it's just not, the media has always been somewhat biased to the Democrats, but they're, now they're not even pretending to be biased. They're just like the press firm for Hillary. It's, it's like Pravda under the Soviet Union, it's scary. So we have this whole mainstream apparatus of the media, of major corporations, of the educational system, of entertainment, Hollywood, all 100% supporting Hillary. So what has happened if you combine the population of the blacks, which almost all vote for Hillary Democrats, the Mexicans was majority do, the Muslims, and then the single women who are really influenced by fashion and what the mainstream media says, 
is very, very difficult to overcome that to elect Trump. And as this one party state consolidates, we're seeing more violence against Trump supporters. Just yesterday, one of Milo's supporters in California, they were attacked for wearing a Trump hat. I did a video about San Jose where people went to see Trump. They had eggs thrown at them. This one guy was hit on the back of the head with a bag of rocks. So violence is common now. A, a Dilbert, like Scott Adams who wrote Dilbert, he lives in California and he wasn't joking. He says he supports Hillary for his own personal safety because it would be dangerous not to. This is the America that we now live in. And yes, I, there's not much enthusiasm for Hillary Clinton. Her rallies are really small and she has to pay supporters. You don't see many Hillary signs. Trump has a lot of enthusiasm. But the enthusiasm doesn't necessarily translate into how many people vote, right? Because most, the typical African American or Mexican or Muslim, they, they're not going to give a damn about some old white woman to go see her rally, but they will vote for her to vote against Trump because Trump represents white America and they know they want to vote against that. And trying to say that all these polls are like rigged, that's getting into conspiracy theory. I mean it's like the bunker mentality with imaginary divisions. It's just not true. It's just that we're at the situation in America that we don't have enough people that support the traditional America anymore. Those days are over. So Hillary will win. Hey, and the alt-right has done great things. And I, I know we like to say, hey, we're the Republican Party now. We control it. <laughs> we don't control shit. People like Paul Ryan, Jeb Bush, Rubio, they're the establishment of the Republican Party. And once Trump loses, they're not going to blame themselves. They're going to say, see, it was the alt-right, the white supremacists, the Nazis. That was the reason we lost. We need to be appeal, be more open to the Hispanic population, to the gay population, be more women friendly. I guarantee you, that's how they're going to do it. And to prevent a future Trump, they're going to be like the Democrats and you have the superdelegate concept. And the superdelegate, in case you guys don't know what that is, they're just a delegate that's not voted on in the primaries like by normal people. This, the donor class, the, the establishment, they select these superdelegates. If you have enough superdelegates, your votes in the primaries don't really mean shit. That's how the Democrats did it with Hillary. No one liked Hillary. Everyone loved Sanders. He was the one that got most of the votes, but she had the superdelegates. It was rigged. In the same way, after this election, the Republicans are going to rig it that no one outside the establishment can become their nominee. They want to ensure it's going to be a Jeb Bush or a Paul Ryan or a Rubio that's going to be their next nominee. And their focus is going to be like, be like the Democrats, maybe talk a little bit about the Constitution, but focused on anti-white policies. That's the direction the Republicans will go. It won't be a home for us. Hillary Clinton will be the Angela Merkel of North America. Just like Angela is destroying Germany by opening the floodgates to Muslims, Hillary promises to do that. And the Democrats, they understand, I understand why they want to do that. Because if we still had 1965 demographics the way the country was for 200 years, you know how many states Hillary would win? Zero. Zero. So they, they changed the population. That was their strategy and it's been effective. And they're going to continue to do so. They're going to grant amnesty. They're going to bring in millions of Muslims. So by the time 2020 comes along, Texas may flip. And you remember the electoral map? And at that point, it's going to be basically impossible for any Republican ever to be elected president again. It's going to be a one-party state. And with all these immigrants coming in, they're just not going to come into the cities like New York or Dallas. No, they're going to push them into white areas. They, they have already done this. Like from Minnesota, that was a very Nordic white area, very peaceful. They pushed the most violent Somalis from Africa and, and Muslims. They're creating all sorts of problems. They're going to push it there. Now in Idaho, they're pushing the Syrian refugees. Again, it used to be a peaceful place. Now there is this refugee that raped a five-year-old little girl. You're going to see more and more of this. This is their strategy. TPP will pass. I mean, the globalists support Hillary. They pay her a lot of money. They want this to pass. So she'll pass it. Oh, she may change some verbiage to have like a fig leaf saying, oh, I changed it so it's not as bad now so I can support it. But as her husband passed NAFTA, she wants to pass TPP because it fits her one world image. And so what's going to happen, even more job outsourcing is going to happen. 
and the standard of living is going to decline in the United States. It already is, it's going to continue. And you're going to have basically more of, much more poor people and the super rich. That's going to be kind of the gap. And that's all going to be blamed on not the Democrats, the crumbling economy, but white supremacists and Nazis. They will. That's who's going to get the blame. And if you're a white guy, I feel sorry for you if you're young because there's almost no way you're going to get a corporate job because most of these jobs are going to be outsourced anyway to lower cost countries like India or Brazil or wherever. And the people they do hire, they're going to have diversity mandates and they can't, they can't afford to hire a white guy. So it's going to be very difficult for white guys to get a job. All right, crime's obviously going to increase as we import more Muslims. We're going to see more terrorism. But oh, by the way, it's not the terrorism that's going to be the issue. It's going to be people like me or you noticing who's doing the terrorism. You're going to be the source of their anger for noticing that. And in the cities, because the Black Lives Matter, it's going to be like Baltimore has gone, where the police, they're not going to risk their careers if, if some Michael Brown is juking and jiving about my dick, my dick in the middle of the road. They're not going to try to stop them because that could lead to a confrontation and they don't want that. They don't want to risk their careers. So they're pretty much going to allow these criminals to run free and do their thing. So you're going to see a lot more violent crime with Hillary Clinton. All right, if you like the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, you're going to love Hillary Clinton. After all, she supported the war in Iraq, and she's controlled by the neocons. But there's another interesting switch to her is because she's female, she's going to have to try to overcompensate to show that she's strong and she's tough. She's an iron woman. So look for her to escalate wars in Syria, maybe boots on the ground, and even Iran. I want to doubt she gets in a war there with uh, thousands of Americans killed. We'll give them a nice little ribbon and say how we love them. But you can bet she's going to push for that. And in Europe, she's going to do kind of what we did with Ukraine, try to topple governments that we don't like, that oppose a one world type of government. Uh, we did that in Ukraine. Hungary and Poland are at risk. I think our NGOs and our CIA will funnel money into those countries to try to overthrow those governments, to do a coup or to interfere with their elections. I see Hillary pushing that hard. Guns, Hillary's going to try to restrict by going the legal route or the lawsuit route. She's already telegraphed this. And what that means is she's going to say, hey, if someone goes on a mass shooting spree, the gun manufacturer is going to be responsible and they can be sued by the victims, which will basically make it impossible to be a gun manufacturer in the United States. So it's, it's basically banning guns, or at least new guns. It would be like, for example, you said, hey, a GM or Toyota, if some guy's driving your car drunk and runs into someone and kills them, you're responsible and the victims can see, sue you, the auto manufacturer. I mean, it'd be crazy, right? But that's what she wants to do. That's how she's going to try to restrict new guns. And for current guns, they're going to put restrictions on the ammunition. I'm sure that's her plan, too. As the economy crumbles and we're involved in another war in the Middle East, crime is increasing in the cities, and there's more terrorist attacks, who, who do you think is going to be blamed? Do you think Hillary's going to accept responsibility? <laughs> do you think the media is going to hold her responsible? I don't think so. So who, who will they blame for, let's say, some refugees come in, gang rape a little girl, and cut off her head? They're going to blame us. Yeah, the right-wing extremists for saying hurtful things to these people that cause them to do these acts. We're going to be considered the number one enemy. And you're going to see that within the funding. They're going to do everything they can to shut down dissent. Uh, from a legal point of view, the number one goal of the FBI is going to be get these neo-Nazis, white supremacist haters, which by the way, if you just think that like all lives matter, including whites, you're going to be considered a white supremacist. That's a hateful position. So if you try to meet up, they're going to be paying these informers to go in, trying to entice people to do crime so they can get a, uh, a catch, so they can show how they got an evil right-wing extremist and arrested on a terror plot. We've already seen some of that. We're going to see it a lot more. And because now, you remember that graphic that I showed you all the corporations that supported Hillary? 
What do you think they're going to do? Like Google, YouTube, uh, Twitter. We've already seen the crackdown on open expression. What do you think they're going to? Is anybody going to object in the government if they continue to shut down dissenting views? I don't think so. This hate is so nebulous. Any view that they don't like is going to be considered hate, and they're going to shut it down. And then they have other things that we're already seeing, but are going to continue. And the economy is going to be so bad, people are going to be terrified to lose their jobs. So let's say if you're a white guy, a middle manager or something, are you going to risk everything to say your view, saying something like, you know, I really think all lives matter, including whites, when that could get you fired or laid off, and then good luck finding a job because you're going to be labeled a hater. That's really not so much the future, that's kind of where we are now. Or a student. It's going to be so hard for students once they get into university to get a job. They're already at risk if they speak out to being expelled. We've seen that in schools. People in this Black Lives Matter saying, no, I think all lives matter. That can't get you expelled now. That's where we are in this country. So we have this entire apparatus of a one-party state that uses fear, economic fear, and sometimes physical fear to keep people in line. And physical fear, by the way, is how they're going to use it, is if people attack racist or right-wing extremists, you know, the government's going to turn the blind eye. They're going to say, well, they kind of deserved it. Um, you know, maybe they said a bad word like nigger, so they deserve to be killed or beat up. But if people on our side so must look cross at one of their pets, oh, they're going to come down with civil rights violations, hate crimes, life sentences in prison. This is just reality. This is how it is. We're coming like the Soviets, a one-party state that does not allow dissent. After every like massacre, terror attack, torture, horrendous thing by these invaders, uh, the mainstream media, which is both in Europe and the United States, their first reaction is, oh, well, we're worried about a backlash. By the evil white people, there's going to be a backlash. I've never seen one. I, I, I would like to say I saw one, but where's the, the backlash? And I, I was talking to someone on Twitter, and they go, oh, we have these groups, and we're fighting back. I'm like, well, good. I, how many, how many, what's the body count of the enemy? I haven't seen any. I'm not advocating it. I'm just saying if you're fighting back, there's none. I mean, you're fighting back by carrying signs and sending Pepe memes, which is nice. It's cute. But these invaders, they're willing to die. They're killing people. They're killing themselves. They have courage. They may be evil, but they have courage. Where most of our people are scared to take even just a basic stance, they, they, they feel they're going to be doxxed if they just say something like, I think all lives matter. They're so cowardly. And the question is, how do we get our liberty if our people are cowards? And I, I'm not throwing stones because I'm in this category too. Because you can say, well, Ramsey Paul, you're not doing anything. You're not out there fighting. I know I'm not. I'm not advocating it. I'm just saying that's the reality of the situation. We have an enemy that's willing to die, that's willing to kill. They don't give a damn what someone says. And then we have us, and we're scared of our own shadows and being in trouble and getting in trouble with someone at school or at work. So we just try to hide and in, in, the, in our basement see, send memes or something. That's not enough. That's not what our ancestors did. I know we like to think about like the Vikings or the Crusaders and send pictures of those guys and feel really inspired. And that is inspiring. But those guys, it was real in, those, in their day. They were risking death. A lot of them did die. And so we're so scared to do anything until we get over that, until we spiritually change ourselves. We, we can't fight back because we don't have... We don't have the spirit right now. And that's what we need to focus on right now is getting together and kind of healing ourselves psychologically because honestly, we've been mind fucked for about 40, 50 years by certain influences and we need to change that. That we have a right to live, that we have a right to self-determination. We have a right to our homeland. We don't need to be like lambs being slaughtered by other people. We have a right to live. Talk to you guys later.